Red Deer turns 100 years old in 2013, and on Saturday, June 29th, Centennial celebrations took a distinct Celtic turn. Alberta Celtic rock band St. James's Gate came down to Lindsay Thurber track and field to crank out some tunes. The barbecues were hot, kids were tossing balls back and forth, and people were filtering in from the day's other centennial events. We had pancake breakfast up at the mall, and then we toured downtown and took in all the statues and the different, uh, the different events that were happening downtown. Now we're here for the evening, if it doesn't rain. And here would be a good spot to talk about the entire flood and weather-related heartaches, pains and postponements. But let's just say there were many. Chair of the 2013 Centennial Committee, Sheila Bannerman, was optimistic festivities would still be enjoyable and well attended. We've got a full weekend of, of events coming up for Homecoming Festival weekend. So we've got, we kick off with a pancake breakfast at Parkland Mall tomorrow morning, Saturday, June 20. After the pancake breakfast kickoff and the Centennial Grove dedication, the events moved downtown to the remarkable Red Deer passport sites. Participants get a passport that guide their visit through museums and various heritage sites around Red Deer. The passport holder can see live actors portraying Red Deer's past. My name is Horace Mears. I was the first fire chief of Red Deer. And the really, one of the really cool things about that one is that we have live actors who are portraying our various different ghost sculptures. So eight out of the ten ghost sculptures will have live actors and people can go and talk to them about who they were and what they, what they did in the past in Red Deer. We had mighty big fires back in 1904. Boy, did we ever. Oh, yeah. April of that year, if I recall, that the livery state... Here, Jeremy Robinson and Daniel Vasquez from Bullskit Comedy are factual representation of historic Red Deer firemen from incorporation as a town in 1901 with population of only 343 to incorporation as a city in 1913, population 2300. $22,000! Would have been a lot worse if they didn't have a fire brigade. That's right. Today, Red Deer's population sits at 97,109 and increasing. The city services many industries and has a vibrant arts and culture scene. We have multiple industries here. Although we're very dependent upon oil, yeah, our economy is more sustainable because it's, it is very and vast. In South Australia, I was born, heave away, haul away. In South Australia, Rocky Port, South Australia. After the festivities at Lindsay Thurber, the centennial celebrations continue throughout the night. The homecoming weekend celebrations are in fact centered on a variety of water-themed light installations to celebrate and raise awareness about Red Deer's extensive park and river system. Way back when we first started planning for the centennial about three years ago, we did some public consultations. People wanted us to celebrate, do things in the parks and celebrate our relationship with the river. So. We, um, we had found out about this, um, this art company that is based in the United Kingdom and they use light as their medium, but they often uh, celebrate the environment. The company, called Createmosphere, uses light as a medium to raise awareness about our relationship with rivers and water using various technical interactive lit atmospheres called River of Lights. What we are interested in is the fact that um, basically nearly any city has got a river. You can talk about the river in a kind of general way and say, well, river, water, this is kind of a you know, general things that you can talk about. But at the same time, what is interesting is if you start doing it in all different rivers all around the world, they're all sort of specific. Mm -hmm. They're specific to the environment, they're specific to the history, they're specific to the city. And they have all their own stories, but all their own stories always go back to something essential which is actually providing us water so what was quite interesting is like the fact that the timeline is also working with a, a space line effectively it's kind of the city has started from here mm -hmm. from the west side which is the history and moved to the kind of present which is further down by Pond, which is more of symbolic of what's going on now and the end of the project was more about the future of the city the three mile bands moving that way and we looked at it also, uh, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very relevant that we've basically looked at all the maps of the development of the water infrastructure. 
so you can actually see that maps of the sort of all the pipelines going in the city sort of growing and so that that's been sort of showing really how the city basically is growing but Laurent had to rethink the River of Lights installation because this was one centennial event that was hugely affected by the flood. The Centennial Committee called on volunteers to help move equipment and tools from the flooded Bauer Ponds to Fort Normando. One of the really interesting parts for me uh, in volunteering for the event was to see how creative the artists have been uh, taking an event that was already planned and having to turn it pretty much on its head and reinvent the whole event. How do you think this installation, the River of Lights installation, uh, inspires people to think about water and the environment a little bit more, if, well, if that is what it's supposed to be? Well, it, it, it does that, and, and it also uh, reminds us that we're very connected with water by having, let's say, the river going through the city of Red Deer. And, and also, the, you know, the water around Red Deer, and, and the importance of water not only as part of nature or recreation, but also I can know as part of uh, basic uh, need for living and survival. So the environment and water legacy has shone through the homecoming weekend. Along with the lit water tower, the Centennial Committee is hoping that the River of Lights installation leaves a lasting impression. But Sheila is hoping with your help and a little magic, the Centennial celebrations can make our community more aware. The legacy that we want to leave is, um, is a greater commitment, a greater awareness of our community for, so that individuals who might not have really known what goes on in Red Deer will have become more connected to the city and will continue that connection in years, in years ongoing. Um, we, have, we have our own events that we're, that we're staging ourselves as a Centennial Committee, but we also have a lot of partner events and those are the ones that will be continuing. They happened last year and they'll happen next year. The things that we're doing ourselves are only for this year. So we're hoping that people will come out to all this stuff and that they'll keep on coming out. And the celebrations continue all year. On July 13th is the Alberta Provincial BMX Bike Race hosted by the Red Deer BMX Track. On July 16th is the outdoor barn dance on Little Gates Avenue, then Westerner Days, and on and on. Go to the reddeer2013.ca website for all the information. Covering the celebrations for the Central Alberta Community Event Series, I'm Ruben Cheddar.